struggle to put inside the factories. And so they go and take my father behind the wall. And they say, you, you, you stay right there. We will now go get the food stuff and we will take the people. And so as I leave them, and I think about my father, they then, oh, I should let you know this. We were not the only Africans. My father, my great grandfather was not the only child to have his father go there. And so, there's other Africans too, who are all standing up there for what he has said with my father, that they all are begging. Oh, do you not realize that I said it is African men? That some think Africans were just kidnapped and stolen in ways that they go into the villages. Sometimes because the Europeans have gone and now caused nothing to grow in the land of our forefathers, that they have no choice but to give up themselves African men. And so what happened when my great-grandfather now go and lead them to where the family is? It's not food stuff that they are carrying, but they are carrying instruments of captivity. Mm. So now they lead all of we back to the factory. Mm. My mother is taken away and I look at my mother, and she has a look on her face. That is what my grandfather tells my father. Oh, I mean, my great-grandfather tells my father. And so he says, as he looked at his mother, she has a look on her face, much like the woman here that I heard earlier, a face of defiance. And so he said he looks, and he sees his mother give him a look. And so he goes. They take him into a dungeon. And then there's a great boulder that he noticed that was out there. There were chains on it. And so his mother is led away. And you hear the wailing of the Africans. And then he said, he comes out at some point after several days inside the dungeon. And he noticed that his mother is by the boulder in chains, sweating. And she is bending over. And so he then runs over to his mother. And he said, Yeah, yeah, for me. And she looks. She said, Your father is gone. I am here. Why was she there? Because some buck or some European wanted to have his way with her. But it did not happen. She said that she went and bit off the lip of the bakra. Mm. And because she would not let them take her. And so what was the punishment and why was the great boulder there? It was to punish those women who refused them. So they had her out in the sun. And he said, she was there. She said, you will always resist. You mm. are oko Chuko, a child of God. You are guilty your day. That is your people. If I am not here, understand that I live within your body. Your father lives within your body. My great grandfather, being an Indies pizza, oh, he was not a whole Indies pizza because he was a child. So when they put them on the battle, on the boats, they have to go and make sure there's a whole Indies piece. So they get three children to make a whole piece. He said that one child dies next to him. Another child is sick, so the child is vomiting. And that's when my great-grandfather said, my name shall be changed. I shall have the defiance that my mother has told me to have. Alan Bekange. And what does the name mean? It means goodbye, cruel world. I give up because I belong to God. Mm. And so with that, oh, what is going on with that? Uh, it is not about giving up of your soul. Mm. It's about showing defiance that no man owns your soul, only God owns mm. your soul. And so when he comes across here, they go and try to give him the name Caesar. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. He still tells them, you may call me Caesar, but I would never answer to it. Mm -hmm. He said, I am Alan Bekange. Mm -hmm. And Gustav mm -hmm. Bakker knew that if they wanted to get anything from him, they must call him Alan. Mm -hmm. And they can put it on the paper, Caesar, on the inventory rolls. 
but they knew they must call him Alan. And so that's why I even asked my father, why did you all give me this name that comes from the old country? My mother said, because this world is an illusion. I said, there are other children around here called Robin, Sally, Jupiter. Jupiter mm. is the king of the gods. My father said, Jupiter, that is a cruel joke, son. Mm. Jupiter is held in captivity. So what king is he? <laughs> he said that you are free, Abbey Hall. My great-grandfather gave us the ability to have freedom. Mm. Why is that? When they brought my great-grandfather here, they took him to Carolina. Mm. And there in Chaston, Chaston County, mm -hmm. there, they have a problem with rattlesnakes there. <laughs> and because they have a problem with rattlesnakes, buckles were dying. But my great-grandfather came with medicine faith, mm. verbal knowledge. So he came with the cure to help the buckles be saved from the rattlesnakes. And guess what? The government of South Carolina is so happy that the Africans say they like, they say, we shall give you and your wife your freedom, which made it possible for us to be free. <laughs> so my father said, Jupiter is held in captivity. So that is a cruel joke. Your name is a name of defiance and independence. And so my old mother then said, <clears throat> for you to think that you are a man, that is not real, based on them letting you think you are a man. Mm. You know you are a man because God has ordained you to be a man. Mm. And so with that, we carry the legacy. Mm. And oh, enough of me. You all want to know about what transpired and what they call, some call the resistance, some call the rebellion, some call the revolt. Some call it the Okichi Rebellion, the Okichi Resistance. And then, uh, I was a member of the 33rd USCT, Company C. I was there in Savannah, and when Big Shoe come, I was calling a girl who be right from Glen County, our community girl called Needwood. She was the prettiest thing in the whole world, a chocolate drop. <laughs> I love that girl, and I married her. Her name is Arajuma Barsetta. Her father said her name means girl born on Friday on a bright new day, a day clean. Mm -hmm. And that gal become my home and my wife. I was calling her in big suit. And then the other Africans start shouting Jubilee mm -hmm. because they knew something was happening. Because mm -hmm. Milton Head had been taken over and changed to Port Royal. Now Fort Pulaski was in place. And it was an old Gallagher man off of uh, Pocket Calico, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. March Haynes who would lead Africans down the water by the Savannah River. And then when he said, when we get by runaway Negro Point, they use another word instead. But when we get by runaway Negro Point, we are around the bend to freedom, taking them to Fort Pulaski. And Reverend Abraham Murchison, he recruits some of us to now go fight in the war. But this is what happened. That because some people did not understand the patois of our people, they said, we need you to interpret the language for us. So I would even be with General Sherman. And I am with Sherman when they speak of that meeting that they are in the Green Mountain House. I am not inside the meeting, but it's my business partner who is inside the Reverend Ulysses Houston. Now he is in there, and I am standing by the door. And I hear Reverend Fraser, who also at the same church with Houston, he goes and tells Sherman, it is the irresistible power right. and will of a man to benefit off the labor of another man without his consent. That's right. That is what Buckers have done with us. And then I also hear Fraser tell him say that there is something within the young men that concerns me. They want to pick up rifles against the rebels. So they are enthusiastically going to Fort Pulaski and Hilton Head, now joining the Federal Army. Because they say they will not forget what has happened to them. And so that's why some of us leave and go with Murchison. And so I hear what is going on. And I hear Reverend Fraser go and tell him that we need land. We need land for us to till, for us to feed ourselves and to have some to spare. And I think 
tell people, when he was saying something to spare, that was so that way we would have business because we were already what you call entrepreneurs. Mm. So with the entrepreneurship within us, we will carry that on. Oh. I know that you all don't want to really just know about the meeting. After we were mustered out, I went up to a place called Yamakra. Mm. I went to a place called Louisville. Mm. And there, not in Savannah, you had Africans because they had heard what Sherman told them that the land now belongs to them. Mm. They went into Yamakra and took over lands in Yamakra. The papers in Savannah wrote about it and said, the Africans are now seeking Negro rule of this area. <laughs> Sherman has now forced them to now put that notion in their heads and they're going crack it. Hmm. And so they had to come and do something hmm. with the Africans in Yamakra and Louisville. But then there were some other Africans at Fairlawn in Whitehall. Captain Shig, he wrote to General O. O. Howard. He told Howard, we Africans have a constitutional right against unlawful seizures and searches. <laughs> they said that this land belonged to us. The Africans from Edisto, going on down to St. John, said that we expect retribution mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for what has gone on with us for centuries. We expect retribution because we are deserving of the land. And I must go and acknowledge this with you. You were right because he was one. He made a statement that when Sherman said this, that all the abandoned rice plantations shall belong to the Africans and no buckets shall be allowed in the corridor. Mm -hmm. He said to us, he said, look beyond the words on the paper. Mm -hmm. Because even with Captain Shig and the 25 of us who signed the petition to Howard to tell him we demand we must have the land, there also was a situation in which Tillerson, who comes here, who goes to replace Saxton, mm -hmm. he goes and tells the Africans, when we say, no buckle shall be allowed here. We own the land. He said, no, you don't. You all do not own the land. You own everything that comes from the land, but the land is owned by the buckles. So just like you told us to look beyond what's written there, they said that all the fruits, all of the vegetables that come from the land, you own that, but you don't own the soil. Mm. And so that is when some of the Africans go, and now, oh, Solomon Farley. Solomon Farley says, we will come up with the Ogichi Manifesto. The Okichi Manifesto said the economic rights of Africans must be ensured. And they also said no buffers from the big Okichi to the little Okichi. That then spread to Africans in Bryan County and Liberty County. And then at the same time, Tunis, I saw Tunis on Hilton Head. I told Tunis, I said that the Africans here are right. We already know and we demand our rights. And there we even talk. We even try to tell Tunis about how to plant oysters. Mm -hmm. Since you're say, 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 gonna become a part of the culture here. Mm -hmm. And so Tunis goes and he goes to St. Catherine and do a great raid with a militia. Mm -hmm. But guess what the Africans do here? We have the Union League. We have the Union League, but we also form the Ogichi Home Guard. Yeah. Well, we now have rifles, shotguns, and muskets. Oh, the Buckersome had given us muskets to shoot the bottom legs. Oh. The bubble the, the links are bubble right. links. Uh, they're called rice, rice birds. birds. <laughs> so they gave it to us. But we turned it not on the birds. We turned it on them. Yeah. We said this belongs to us. We are deserving of it. And that we will pass this on to the entire Sherman Reservation. And there they managed to get tunas off of uh, St. Catherine. And he goes to Belleville. And we show up to Belleville with him. Right. And we said we shall be a part of your army. So now there are over 200 Africans guarding Belleville. And they formed the Belleville Farmers Association. And now I will say this about McIntosh County. It is so disgusting to me when people talk about Fan Butler. How dare you deal with Butler? She's the reason why Tunis now has to fight for the election. Oh, the election was a fraud anyway. 
but right there at Belleville. And we look, and the government begins to look, and they say, wait a minute, there's a problem with these Africans. They are not trying to start nations. They are becoming as dangerous as that island called Haiti. Just like we stopped Haiti, we must do the same thing in Sherman's reservation. Too many of them are thinking that they must be independent. Because that's what we said. We said, Ogichi until death. And we all, oh, when they finally sent the soldiers at us, guess what we did? We tore down the bridge. The mansions on the plantation, we sabotaged them. Then, when they came for us, we stood our grounds. Yes, they arrested over a hundred of us, and they held the trial in Savannah. And so, yes, they went and convicted us on sedition and all the other things like that. But the Bukra governor understood it was the power in the Africans because we were the ones that started the Republican Party in Georgia. Ah. And over in Carolina, it was our brother, Robert Smalls, that started there out of Buford, the Republican Party there. And so what did he do? Bullock went inside, amnesty for all of us. And so we still went back to the bunker and said, we demand the land. But if you want to negotiate with us, we are not going to talk to you. Get some Africans to come and start to negotiate with us for the land. And that's what we did. And then what did we become? Rice planters started selling our goods in Savannah and started the borough community. And right now, we thrive because we say it is our destiny to have this land. And it's for us to have the land to take care of ourselves and our families and have independence. As I said, what I share it's not what I've heard, but what I've seen. And we carry this with us. And we expect to see this go throughout this entire Sherman's reservation. And that is my testimony. I can go longer, but I will end there. Thank you. Oh, my goodness.